What's up guys? So, what we're gonna be doing today is I asked a ton of questions, I asked a ton of questions, no, you guys asked a ton of questions on my Instagram page. Um, I put out and asked, does anybody have questions about my prep, anything regarding my prep, anything regarding my coach during my prep, which this is my coach. Also, hey guys. <laughs> also my boyfriend, this is Dan, you probably know him by at the underscore Serbian. Uh, but we're gonna go and answer all of those questions today. So if you're interested in doing a prep, um, if you've done a prep before, uh, if you're looking for a coach, like these are all things we're going to answer. We're going to answer what are my calories were, what I struggled with. Um, we're going to go through a lot of stuff. So if you haven't already, go ahead, like, and subscribe, and um, tune in for the video. All right. Yeah, you, you want to read the questions? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and eat this while we do <laughs> too. This yeah. is like 222 calories <clears throat> of goodness. So, all right. Yeah. So... Well, actually, I got some questions on my page as well. So, but we kind of just went through all of them, chose the best ones um, or the most relevant ones because we did get a lot of just random questions. Ooh. First question was kind of the most common one that we did get out of all of them, and it was, "How did you and Kayla deal with being in a relationship together, as well as you coaching her at the same time?" Uh, you want to answer that first? Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> so, right at the beginning, we actually you know, decided that we needed to have like a specific line between both, you know, where we were kind of dealing with, you know, things in relationship wise and things in terms of coaching wise. Mm -hmm. um, we really kind of set that standard before we even started. So that way we knew that when we got into it, we would know the separation between the two and we had to differentiate between those um, versus like not really knowing and then just kind of getting into it and then having problems associated with one or the other. And then it would just kind of create a whole big mess. Um, so having that conversation first beforehand, making sure that, hey, you know, at these points, you know, we can be like we normally are, you know, in a relationship. And then the other points, you know, I have to get really serious with you. And, you know, she understood all that. And obviously there had to be a big line between the two. But I think over time, like in the beginning was difficult, but over time we kind of both got a little bit more used to it. Um, so we both got better with it in general. Yeah. I would say. I would say what, um, what helped is I like, so before last year when he went through a prep and I wasn't in prep, um, the struggle was me eating a bunch of crap like in my car or like making pizza before he came home. Like that was the hard part is there was a big separation between us because we weren't doing the same thing and our goals were different. Um, now with our goals being the same because he was prepping along with me, um, and yes he was my coach, but we were both had the same exact goals. We were both eating the same exact thing basically. And so the house was full of nothing but the food that we needed. There was no junk, there was nothing. So both of us never ever once cheated on the diet. Um, and I think that him having him as my coach was, honestly, I think it helped more than anything versus me living with somebody who doesn't have the same goals, eats whatever, like, I think that would have been very different. So um, yeah, honestly, I liked it. I know a couple people who are, their significant other is their coach. Um, and it works fine. You just have to know, like, okay, this is coach talking, this is boyfriend talking. You just gotta separate the two, and that's hard for some, but we played it off really well, I would say. Mm, yeah. Um, did you ever develop bad eating habits during your shred or your cut? Um, <clears throat> no. Not at all. I would say, um, did I have days that sucked? Yeah. <laughs> did I have days that uh, all I could think about was sour candy and donuts <laughs> absolutely uh even mid-workout you know dreaming about sweet food stuff like that but i wouldn't say no i, I literally just like he text me what i need to do or he put in my plan this is your new macros and i'm gonna follow it uh i think post show is when um i think a lot of stuff started to hit me so you know a week ago right when i finished up show went to cheesecake, we ate everything, woke up the next morning and I was a whale. Um, and then for the next three or four days, we just ate whatever, you know, I think one meal, one to two meals out of the day was balanced, the rest balanced, <laughs> the rest wasn't. So uh, coming back home from vacation, that's when I struggled. That's the first time I struggled the whole prep with dieting, I guess you could say, and like feeling like I, you know, have trouble like with my my brain and my body wants to eat all these things because i can technically have them but in reality i need to reverse diet i need to do it the healthy way 
Um, and I'm also in another prep now. So um, I struggled with that for probably 48 hours and then I was good. So mentally I'm very strong when it comes to that stuff. And um, when I'm given a plan, I know what I need to do and I just do it. So mm-hmm. yeah. The third question is, did it help not knowing your weight? Um, yeah, I think like your weight really like has nothing to do with you on stage. You just need to look your best. Um, your weight is for your coach. Like, it's not for you to know, honestly. Um, it, I think that it only impedes your process by knowing your weight, and then it stresses you out, and then like you're thinking about it more, and then guess what, we don't lose weight. So I think taking it away was just like so much help, so much help. Sometimes I'd hear him go, oh, you know, like, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's good. You know, I get excited, <laughs> but uh, I think I'm happy that he took that away and I think it benefited me a ton because what is the number on the scale going to do for me? Nothing. What is it going to do for him? Everything. So, yeah. In the beginning, she didn't really struggle with that aspect. I mean, it didn't really bother her weight, you know what I mean? Because we were, you know, even in the beginning, like we were still consistently losing weight and then there would be some points where we would just kind of hit a, you know, plateau for a little bit, but she would still week to week, like week to week, actually make changes visually but just not on the scale. So in turn, the more she kind of worried about the number on the scale, the more stress caused, and then the more stress obviously led to more water weight, and then it just kept going up, and then it was just a bad cycle overall. So once we took that away, completely just helped her just kind of relax about that whole subject, and take away the stress, take away the cortisol, and that just kind of helps her result, just kind of kick it into gear a lot more efficiently. So uh, what was your calorie intake from beginning to end? I'll give you, I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> I guess I'll tell you. Um, <clears throat> Even though it doesn't really it doesn't matter, matter at all. It doesn't matter to you because my numbers are irrelevant to you. My numbers are only relevant to me and my coach. So whatever I'm about to say, don't go run and do that because um, it's not going to work for you. Okay? Just want to get that out there. Um, my ending calories were 1,260, um, which was... Uh, 80 carb, mm-hmm. 80 yep. carb, 140, five, five protein, protein, and 40 fat. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my ending. My starting was like 28, 2800 calories, 2800 yeah. calories, 300 carb, <clears throat> 145 protein. I think it was like 150, maybe 155. Protein. We started a little bit higher, but then we yeah. ended up taking it off and a little bit that was like 60 or 70 yeah something. so 2800 calories um you know <laughs> pop tart smashing kayla to zucchini eating kayla yeah and chompy's bread chompy's bread saved my life uh you guys already know that but that was the difference um i was at 1260 for probably like three or four weeks um and did some days suck yeah but honestly it's all about your mind and your mindset. Like I just made it work and I did it and I looked forward to every meal and that was it. I never really complained much about it. So <laughs> some days sucked, but it was mostly, it was just mindset. Yeah. Could you have lost weight and gained muscle without tracking macros? You can answer that. You're my coach. <laughs> um, I would say it's possible. And when I mean possible, that would be only for people who are just starting out. If you're an advanced athlete, if you've been training for years on end, and I mean at least a three, maybe five years, and you know, you've know you had some experience under your belt, um, I would say it's almost impossible to gain fat or gain muscle and lose fat at the same time without tracking macros. All right, next question. <laughs> Number six is, do you regret anything about prep or your competition? Nope. No. <laughs> I have nothing. I, it went really well. It went really smooth. It went exactly how we wanted it to go. Um, did I expect to win the overall? No. Did I expect to win my class? Yeah. I had a high percentage in my head that I was like, yeah, you can take your class. Um, again, you don't know until you get there what you're up against. Um, and I ended up winning. And I do not regret a single thing. It went exactly how I wanted it to go. Uh, what type of diet did you follow? Did it change throughout the 16 weeks? So we went over my calories and macros already. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can go through like, like when you adjusted my calories, I guess. You can just say like, what was the indicator to drop my calories a little? Um, 
Well, let me start off by saying that, you know, she didn't have a meal plan. Like I said, she only had macros. So she basically ate whatever she wanted for the most part, as long as she hit her macros every single day. Now, in terms of how we adjusted over time, it wasn't anything specifically programmed of like, hey, by this week we should be, you know, dropping calories to this point or macros to this point, not at all. Um, obviously in my mind, I had an idea of where I wanted her weight to be and how she wanted to, or how we, she was supposed to look by a certain point leading up to the show. But in terms of how we dropped her calories and how we dropped her macros, that was entirely just feel based. You know what I mean? Just depending on how she looked, what her weight was at, and, you know, if we felt like we needed to drop calories, did we add, need to add a refeed in, you know, things like that. That's all instinctual. So, yeah. um, but other than that, I mean, like I said, overall plan wise, 2800 down to 1300 you know, that was mostly instinctual. So. How did you find the motivation to stick with all the training and improvements? Uh, well, motivation was not always there, so I don't like that word at all. Um, I just, I had a plan and I took action. Like, I think often in life, Everybody likes to make things difficult as fuck for no reason, and uh, I decided not to do that. I decided to always plan ahead. Um, yeah, there was like two or three days in there where my planning sucked, you know, and one of those days ended up being when I was a day out. Um, I completely messed up on a meal, completely pushed a meal really, really late, um, had to eat an abundance of food at night, didn't give him enough time to look at my body and check me out, and that kind of like, that sucked and I had family in town, I had a photo shoot, like there was so much going on before um, show day, but I honestly like, I don't know, I think I would have spurts of motivation, yeah, but I think I just built the discipline, I woke up every day with a plan and I executed. It was really simple. Um, mentally, yes, I struggled sometimes, but uh, I just struggled and still did what I needed to do. So I would have a bad attitude, but I would still be doing everything to max effort. Um, I could be really pissy in the gym. I could be really sad in the gym. I'm crying while I'm doing a set. I don't, I don't know. But, but I still did everything. I never ever gave up. I never ever cheated. And I always finished the day off to where I needed to be. And that was why I was successful. So yeah, motivation came and gone, but I stayed disciplined and I continued to push forward. And I think um, a lot of my followers and people who engage with me and you know you guys watching this uh, a lot of messages consistently and um, just comments that support definitely pushed me through harder days and I would sometimes just cry reading them because it was so overwhelming in a good way but yeah discipline discipline you'll get if you develop discipline you will get anywhere you want in life guaranteed last question so this is actually perfect last question uh, do you feel like you lost a significant amount of strength during your prep? So that's what everybody thinks. Everybody thinks that like, like you're cutting weight, you have low energy, so you don't have to put as much effort in and your weight's, you know, your strength's going to go down. You're going to be weak. Bullshit. If you go in the gym and you push and you work your ass off, your lifts will not drop. I went up, I think, in five of my lifts during my prep. During my prep. The last week of my prep, when it was the hardest mentally on me um, to push through, I was hitting higher weights. I was pushing more weight. I was pulling more weight. Like, that's the crazy part. And I think that a lot of people use prep as an excuse to just, like, back off. So I'm like, I'm tired or meh. Like, no, like I never did that. I continued to push forward. I continued to, you know, add on more weight, even if I was about to pass out, you know, like there's a couple handful of times where I had to just sit down. I had to literally just sit down on the floor next to my weights because I wasn't sure if I was going to fall over or not. Um, but I knew that it was a part of the process and I knew that I just had to get through it. And then once I got through it, I got home and I got to eat, you know, um, but the right answer is your lifts should not go down during your prep. If anything, they should go up. Whether you are natural or unnatural, which I am natural, your lifts should go up if you are working your ass off and you are pushing hard enough and you have a great team around you. Um, so technically, when it comes to the human body and biology and physiology, the way the body works is yes, you give it less energy, you will receive less output. Now, on the other hand, your mind, is by far the most powerful aspect of your entire body. So if you tell yourself that 
okay, now I'm eating less calories and I ha don't have as much energy to expend in the gym. And that would mean that my weights are gonna go down. If you tell yourself that from the beginning, then you will for sure experience that. Like there's no way around that. But see her, like specifically, she's a natural athlete, okay? She's never taken any enhancements um, during this prep whatsoever, okay? Normally when you're enhanced, in some cases you will gain strength because you know, you're getting assistance on the outside, exogenous hormones. So, and even most people still that are enhanced, like they, in some cases, do not gain strength because they don't push themselves hard. So it's like, it doesn't matter what you're taking or what you're doing. If your mind is not programmed, like if you're not telling yourself that every day when you're training to push harder than you did last time, to train just a little bit harder than you did last time and just hit the damn numbers that you're supposed to in the gym, then, you know, regardless, it's not gonna work. Okay, the camera died, but um, yeah, and I just brushed my hair and all that stuff, but that's basically it, honestly. Um, maybe we'll do like a part two if anyone has like more questions. But those are the questions that related more to the prep than anything. There's a lot of other questions. So we can film another Q&A if you guys like this. So go ahead, give it a thumbs up. If you are interested, um, subscribe, obviously. But if you're interested in um, lifestyle coaching, if you're interested in prep coaching, um, with either one of us, we're both mm. in the same business, which is yeah. Authentfit LLC. So uh, yeah, you can go to Authentfit's Instagram, both of our applications are in there. You can go to our individual Instagrams and apply through that as well. Mm. Uh, I am not doing any prep coaching because that was my first prep. I do not know much about that. I'm still learning, mm. but I am all lifestyle. So male, female, yeah. um, anybody above 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so yep. you have anything else to say? No. I think we pretty much okay. covered all of it. Okay. Well, thanks for liking, or thanks for liking. <laughs> thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.